Oh my God, I love this song. Everybody sing it with me. There used to be a great tower alone on the sea. But did you know that when it snows, my eyes become loud and the light that you shine can't be seen. Go to sleep, go to sleep, baby! Hey everyone, welcome to What The Flick. Alonzo Duralde, Matt Achety. Our special guest this week is Amy Nicholson from LA Weekly. LA Weekly. Well, I was going to say I wasn't sure if it was Village Voice or how that rolled out. For LA it. Weekly. All the all the stuff. All the voices. <laughs> uh, and she may be the lucky one because she did not see Vacation. Matt and I did. Yeah, so Vacation is a disaster of a movie uh, that sets out to recreate the cross-country trip taken by the Griswolds. This time it's Rusty Griswold, played by Ed Helms. Uh, and he forces his family into this car to drive across country because they're going back to Wally World and clearly somebody hopes that we're going to get the same movie, which we do not. Let's watch a clip. Hi, folks. You must be the Fung family. Huh? I'm just messing you. The guy's face is like, Fungs? Huh? Stop talking to me. Sh Sheila, Sheila, do you like school this year? It's OK. So, do you like school this year? That's seriously what you sound like. Just shut up. You gotta go faster, Dad. The pressure doesn't go any faster. Okay, well, maybe if I press this rapid button, it'll like give it a boost or something. Yes. What? What is happening? Why am I swimming? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They see me rolling. They look like somebody blew their head off. Freeze! This trip's been a nightmare. You had a dream to take your family to Wally World. Never let that go. What kind of a family are you? We're the Griswolds, you piece of ass. Yeah. I hated this movie. Mm, okay, I see, I didn't hate it, only because, call it the soft bigotry of low expectations, but <laughs> this, is, this is the directorial debut of Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, who, as writers, previously gave us the two horrible bosses movies and the incredible Burt Wonderstone. And they're about to give us the new Spider Man. And they're about to give us the new Spider Man, exactly. Yeah, that makes so, me nervous. So, coming off of those previous films, I was expecting to laugh zero times. I laughed five or six times. Oh, that's far too many. And so, I can't dump on this movie as much as I would have had it been Burt Wonderstone level agony. Uh, this movie's terrible. I. I <laughs> I hated this movie. I, it, and part of it is just, it's, it, this is a movie that exemplifies the phrase, the banality of evil. <laughs> like, it's just so, like, it, it's, it's terrible. It, the, part of the problem is Ed Helms and uh, Christina, Christina, Applegate. Christina Applegate, like, you've got a good cast here, and people oh, yeah. who are capable of being funny, uh, you know, we even get some original cast members showing up. Sure. And... Horrible Bosses, the first one, I think is a funny movie. So even the writers are capable of writing jokes. I don't know why they didn't hear. Uh, this movie is shockingly unfunny. Like, it's just, there's, I laughed out loud one time in this movie. Now, there's a scene that is kind of amusing, and I think a, a little bit tighter shot, a little bit better directed. It could have been really funny. There's a scene at the Four Corners Monument right. that I thought was kind of amusing. But both of the times I laughed were in scenes that had nothing to do with the primary story of this. Uh -huh. And that really bothered me because it's like, okay, the throwaway gags in here are funnier than the main story well, of the movie? Yeah, the, That's a huge problem. The main story is a drag and they don't do anything very interesting with it. For me, there were sort of these, these kind of individual discrete set pieces that could have come from almost any movie that have very little to do with what's going on here. I like, I thought the sorority house sequence had some funny stuff. I thought the Four Corners sequence had some funny stuff. But overall, it just felt like I didn't buy the Griswolds as characters. Yeah. They're just, you know, this sort of slapdash thing of cliches. The two kids relate to each other in a way that kids don't and, or wouldn't in front of their parents, certainly, without the parents giving the younger one a healthy smack on a periodic occasion. I mean, um, part of why I didn't see this is because every time I drive by the billboard, I just want to do a silent prayer for Christina Applegate. Yeah. Because it makes me upset that she's in this She's, she's I mean, certainly I'm too good so for this. I'm so sad for her. But again, the sorority house sequence is sort of her moment to shine, and I thought 
she kind of made the most of that. And so, but yeah, for the most part, you know, it's, we, we were talking about the Judy Greer effect a couple of weeks ago, but like last week it was poor Michelle Monaghan getting oh. stuck in pixels with nothing to do and, and like being wooed by the awful Adam Sandler. And yeah, this, this week's victim is Christina Applegate. Uh, yeah. One of the things that really bothered me about this movie is its mean spiritedness, mm. but it wants to have it both ways. Like it's it's got this really mean spirit towards its characters, but then it wants you to like the characters in a way that I think the original Vacation doesn't actually do, right? I think that Clark Griswold in the original Vacation is kind of a prick. Yes. Like he's, and and he may think he's okay, but that guy's a douchebag, right? No, like yeah, he drags he, he, his family across country. He's a like, horrible father. Right, he's Who a horrible father. Well. <laughs> he's willing to have an affair on his wife. Like he gets, you know, they get to Wally World and he freaks out and takes somebody hostage. Like that guy's an asshole, but the movie pokes fun at him and the movie, you know, Harold Ramis' direction in that movie is willing to go with that. And at, at the time, we're willing to follow that along because Chevy Chase was good at that kind of role. Ed Helms is too charming for that. I yeah. mean, Ed Helms is and, too nice a guy. And the movie can't make up their mind as to like how stupid versus how smart he is, how naive versus how worldly. Like it almost changes from scene to scene. And I think that a movie can give you characters that you care about and have you enjoy watching them squirm and be humiliated. There's there's a I think a whole branch of comedy that does that well. This movie doesn't do that and right. doesn't know how to strike that balance. Yeah. Okay, wait, but for the ladies, here's the important question, which yes. is how is Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> it's kind of a one joke thing. Like if you saw the Red Band trailer, that's it. That's all there is. But look, like if you want to see scantily clad Chris Hemsworth with a fake movie, dong in his the movie junk, or you know? is it? The movie mm -hmm. definitely <laughs> delivers on that. Yes, Have you been but, reading my diary? <laughs> <laughs> but it says but it's not that it's a whole sequence of uh, Leslie Mann plays grown up Audrey. She's married to to Chris, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth who's like a local weatherman in Dallas. Uh, which uh, uh, you know, I saw it with Christy was sitting next to me, and you know she went to SMU, and I lived in Dallas for a long time. And when they cut to their McMansion in Plano, she goes, "That is not Dallas." <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, that sequence has a joke, or a, maybe two jokes that are sort of repeated over and over again, and it just. It's sort of tiresome. Like, I mean, yeah, he's game and he gives it his all, but the material is so weak, I couldn't even tell you, oh, he's funny or oh, he's not funny, because he's just he's just working with what he's got. And I know? think we know that Chris Hemsworth can do comedy. We've seen him do lighter roles, or he's at least willing to goof on himself. There's, you know, he gets some laughs as Thor. Sure. We yeah. saw him in Cabin in the Woods, and he's able to true, be true, funny true. while, be, you know, he's. If we were to remake something like Scooby Doo, he would be the perfect Fred, uh, Fred because. <laughs> He would, you know, he's this gorgeous guy that that can be funny and have comic timing and still come off like an oaf, but you still like him. He might have been better as as the patriarch of the Griswolds. Like that might have been more interesting than Ed Helms. Like Ed Helms is too charming here. True. I, so. I mean, it, it, it's not like you know you you can only cast a certain kind of actor because one of the sort of minor funny in jokes of the movie is that Rusty looks at the old pictures from the old vacations and he's played by a different yeah. actor in every one of them. <laughs> you know, like, oh, well, yeah, that's true. You, how did how did Anthony Michael Hall become Eric Lively, become Johnny Galecki, now become Ed Helms? Right. Like, what is the DNA in this guy? Anyway, yeah, this is, it, it's it's not good, but it's, I save my, my rancor of the worst for movies that don't make me laugh at all. And I laughed a few times, which means when it comes on cable, fast forward to the parts that the, the, there are a few parts that work, and the rest of it make a sandwich. All for right, me, so anyway. so your score? I give it a six. Oh. Which seems, I know it seems generous, but I Who are you, that, that's 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 no, one point for each time I laughed. You laughed five times. Five or six. It's it's <laughs> blurry. <laughs> I give it one point for being in focus. This movie is worse than Pixels. There. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Yeah, it's I, worse than Pixels. I, oof, I yeah. saw Pixels. Yeah, I haven't a, even seen this. It's and that's that's, I was just thinking, which would I rather sit through again? And I honestly don't know. They're at least tied. <laughs> it, this is the thing about expectations. My expectations for Pixels were really low. My expectations for this were low, but this one has a better pedigree, and it's just terrible. Right. So fair enough. Uh, All right, so that's a, is, it's a three point five for us, right, and on the twenty-eight percent on the tomato meter, entirely too high. I'm going to have to adjust that. Go see Rogue Nation. Just yeah. don't worry about this. Bye.